What people don't know, they can't influence. And what they can't influence stays within your control. The minute you let it out and get people involved in your business, you lose your mystery and create an environment for all types of opinion, good and bad, to fester in your business. And that's why as an elegant person, there's certain things you need to keep very private. And that's what we're about to address in this video. your life private keeps you safe physically mentally emotionally and even spiritually and the less you share the safer you will be as a person privacy is very imperative to your well-being and to be honest with you family most people don't care a thing about you they're just being very what <laughs> nosy and that's not really good so why do you want to give them the opportunity to knows things all up in your business when you can just zip it <laughs> as an elegant person you need to always maintain your mystery at all times and that is why keeping things private is also very important so let's get right into the 15 things that you need to keep private as an elegant person so that you can live a safe and a fulfilled life the very first thing that i've put down here on my list that you must keep private is your financial status. The moment you reveal your financial status to some people, it may come across as bragging. To other people, you have put yourself in a light that exposes you as a target and you might end up being a victim to wicked and unreasonable men who don't care a thing about you but about all the things that you have. So it's important that you keep your financial status to yourself. Nobody really cares, nobody wants to know. For your safety, for your well-being, and for your sanity, keep that information to yourself. The second thing you must keep private is your relationship status. Now, this one is especially if you are a public figure or you are very active on social media or you are a single person. Keep your relationship status very private, maybe up until the time you say I do. Like after you have said the I do's, you can now reveal just the hints just one picture or just tell people I'm married now so that when you are pregnant you'll not be wondering ah, when did you get pregnant when did she get pregnant is she pregnant outside marriage mm, not that I'm condemning anything but I'm just saying like so that's the only reason why you reveal but as a single person nobody outside your inner circle should know anything about your relationship status and I'm saying this for very good reason the third thing that you must keep private as an elegant person would be intimate details about your relationship and when I say relationship I'm talking to both the single people and the married people when you are in your in a relationship keep the details about your relationship private keep it between you your partner and your God most especially don't share on social media don't share with your friends don't share with your family if it's possible. Only share with your family when maybe you need some form of intervention or someone to... Even at that, keep things... With... See, let me tell you something. The minute you start to share details about your relationship with someone else, what you're doing is you open the door for other people's ideologies, opinions. You open the door to their limiting beliefs. You just open that door and allow them to just come and pour on you because people can only advise you based off of the knowledge that they have about life. And I always say that a person's perspective about life is not life, it's not reality. It's just their perspective. And sometimes their perspective may be based on very limited information that they have. So you don't want to create that environment where someone is coming to place their limited beliefs on you. Whatever you have, deal with it. If you're having issues within your relationship, unless you're talking to someone who's highly intelligent and would not um, give you advice based on his own life experience, then you can talk to that person. But just keep details about your relationship to yourself. Keep it, keep it away from social media. Keep it away from friends. Keep it away from family. Just keep it, zip it, and keep it between you, your partner, and your God. The fourth thing that you need to keep private as an elegant person would be your family affairs and your family problems. If you bring the public into your family affairs, be ready to face the consequences of having different opinions, different ideologies in your family issues and that might end up even leaving you very confused. People will judge you 
no matter how good you try to portray yourself or look, they will judge you, they will put their nose at you, you will just have different opinions and you will end up being very confused. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything should just be kept between you and your family or amongst your family members. Family matters, stay within the family, okay? The next thing you must keep private would be brand new ideas. Now there's a high possibility, like a high chance that you will lose your enthusiasm when you share your brand new ideas with someone who doesn't share the same values or goals or attributes as you when it comes to achieving your goals. So imagine if you're sharing your goals with someone who is a very low achiever, doesn't like to um, put in the work to get stuff done or really doesn't know a lot of things about success, that person can easily just sway you away from this beautiful idea that you have had and you can easily just lose your motivation and the drive to pursue that idea and make it a reality. So it's important that you keep your ideas to yourself until you have executed them. And even if this person is not an, o an underachiever, sometimes you may be telling that your idea to someone who would steal it behind your back and go and implement it before you implement it. Before you know it, you see your idea somewhere else and you're wondering, wait, oh, but I, I was the one who shared this idea with her or him. So just keep your ideas to yourself and only share your ideas with someone who you know will not only uplift, motivate, encourage, and inspire you to um, pursue the idea. You have to have that one person. If you don't have that person, keep that idea to yourself. It's better kept private, okay? The next thing you must keep private will be your goals and your achievements. Not everyone is rooting for you like I said before and sometimes you may be talking to a hater in disguise. Someone can come to you and disguised as a friend and you, be th you think, oh, you're talking to someone who really has my best interest at heart. Meanwhile, you're talking to someone who is jealous, envious of you and wants to be all that you are. And then you just keep yapping and yapping and yapping. And what you're doing is you're attracting envy, jealousy, hatred, anger to yourself without even knowing. So keep your goals and achievements to yourself. And this is not to say that you don't get excited when you achieve something. I mean, share what you must, but... Don't be overly um, loud or braggadocious about it, especially when you know that someone has an ill or a negative energy towards you when it comes to your success and your achievements, okay? So keep it on a down low. The next thing you keep private as an elegant person will be material purchases. When you purchase something, don't come over, oh, especially on social media, don't come out and show everyone oh i just got this brand new fendi i just got this brand new car i just got let us just see you driving the car let's see you wearing the shoe let's see you wearing the wristwatch do you understand let's see you carrying the bag you don't have to come talk about it just be about it wear it that's the best way to show it wear it and not don't show it do you understand what i'm saying so don't come talk to us about what you purchased unless you are probably influencing for a brand Okay, the next one, and this one I see is very, very important, and I'm going to lay a little bit of emphasis on it, would be be very quiet and keep to yourself an unverified information. So it's very easy for anyone to type anything behind their phone and say anything about anything, even any situation, about a matter. It's very easy for someone to just concoct and cook up stories about a person, about a thing, just cook up stories based off of their own ideologies, their own mentalities. And these things are absolutely not true. And then you are sitting down there absorbing the information and you're like, oh, okay, so this is it. And then you unf unverified information is how I call it. Unverified news around the world. I remember before the, while I was preparing for this episode, I saw a post on social media by Tyler Perry. So this post is about um, a blog carried a post that says American actress Cassie Davis died of lung cancer at the age of 58. And then he just said, I put across it that this is a lie. Apparently, a blog decided to carry false rumor that someone who um, plays a role in one of Tyler Perry's movies has died of lung cancer. And everybody kept reaching out to Tyler Perry to um, share their condolences. And he's like, okay, maybe I'm, I don't, I'm not so sure. So he said he called the lady to ask her, are you dead? <laughs> In fact, it was just so funny and the lady was like, no, I'm still very much alive. Aren't you talking with me? And he had to come out on social media to say that it was a lie. And then I think I like what he wrote and when he talked about 
um, be careful how you pass across wrong rumors because people were already warning the woman, not knowing that she was still very much alive. And she's a woman who doesn't have social, a, a social media page or anything like that. So there's no way to easily get to her to get um, access to a verified information. So people easily can just sit down behind their phone at the back of their computers and type whatever it is that they want to type. And we have a lot of mental people in society today. Too many mental people. So before you share an information, ensure that it's a very it's from a verified source. The next one you need to keep private will be your social worth. This one is for the do you know who I am people. We don't know who you are. We don't even care to know who you are. Keep it to yourself. Keep your do you know who I am to yourself. Nobody knows you. Keep it to yourself. Unless you're using your position or your social status to help somebody change a life, help a need, help society, and reach the earth. If you're not doing that, don't keep it to yourself. Don't go to a restaurant and be like, give me the front seat. Do you know who I am? No, we don't know who you are. The next thing that you must keep private as an elegant person will be your disagreements, quarrels, and then the fights that you have with people in your life. This one is a no-brainer. Any mature human being knows to keep whatever squabbles he has with anyone to themselves. If you cannot settle it between you and that person, right? It's best to just zip it and keep it quiet and keep life moving. But the minute you go and start to say, oh, I'm no longer talking to this person. Oh, me and this person are falling out. You're so immature. You're, you're, you are a baby. That's who you are. Immaturity at its peak. Okay, the next thing that you must keep quiet and keep private about would be your act of service and charity works. When you do good, keep it to yourself. I don't know if the Bible meant, I don't know what the Bible meant when it says, don't let your left hand or your right hand know what your other hand is doing. Keep it to yourself. If you're good to someone, don't tell. Don't tell. You're not supposed to tell. Just zip it and be good and be kind and let the universe reward you for your good deeds. Stop expecting people to see you as a good person just because you helped anyone. Nobody really cares. So keep it to yourself. Okay, okay. The next thing you must keep to yourself will be your weaknesses and setbacks. When you have weaknesses that you're dealing with, keep it to yourself and deal with it yourself. I put down here that it can be mis easily misunderstood by people when you come across and some people think it's a way of being humble or meek and let people just see I'm going through this. Nobody really cares. And you can, it can easily be misunderstood. And instead of people seeing you as humble by sharing your weaknesses and your setbacks, they just look at you as something else. And you might not be able to deal with the mental consequences of that. So if you have weaknesses and setbacks as an individual, it's better, it's best to deal with it in private so that you're dealing with it at your pace and not, um, dealing with it with the expectation of the people you have shared it with. Don't share it with the public. Of course, your trusted inner circle, your trusted confidence so that it can help you maybe when you need um, an accountability partner, for example. You can share with those people, but don't share overly share it with the people that are not in your inner circle. Because when you have setbacks and um, weaknesses, there are things that can easily make you very vulnerable. And if you're sharing it with the wrong person who is insensitive and not very kind about um, situations like that, then you might end up just getting very hard lashes from this person, especially when things go south between the both of you. The next one that I've put down here would be don't share your career opportunities, especially when you have not executed the opportunities or taken advantage of them. People are malicious. People are mean. Don't share your career opportunities with anyone. Let them find out by you doing or taking advantage of the career opportunity. Okay? Again, zip it. And the final point here that I've put down, which is actually very important, especially if you're very active on social media, would be do not share your present location. Like never post where you are in real time. This is for your own safety. Never post where you are or what you're doing in real time, except it is absolutely necessary that you do. Maybe you're working for a brand or influencing for a brand and you have to post where you are at. Even at that, ensure the brand is providing you with adequate security, but never ever share in real time what you are doing or where you are at. 
because <laughs> the internet is maliciously malicious these days and you my elegant people need to ensure that you're keeping yourselves very safe remember that what you do not share remains within your influence and that means it remains within your control what you share goes out into the world and is open for scrutiny ideologies negativity and whatever else it is so it's best to keep things inside instead of overly talking about it now before we go i have put down some scriptures here that i would like to read to you so that i can lay better emphasis on the topic that i have just shared with you right now which is keeping things private king solomon was a very wise man when he gave us some of those his wise sayings and i'm going to read just a few of those of these things to you the first bible portion would be from the book of proverbs chapter 17 verse 27 and 28 and i'm reading it from the message translation and it says the one who knows much says little what? the one who knows much says little an understanding person remains calm. Even dancers, listen to that, even dancers who keep quiet are thought to be wise. As long as they keep their mouth shut, they are smart. That's one. This second one was written by, I think, James in the New Testament. And it says, it's from James chapter 1 verse 19. And it says, my dearest brothers and sisters, Take this to heart. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. And of course, it says be slow to become angry as well. But the emphasis is be slow to speak. This one is from Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19 to 27. It says, in a multitude of words, transgression is not lacking. In a multitude of words where there are plenty transgression sin is not lacking but he who restrains his lips is prudent the one who restrains his words is very wise and again the final one will be from proverbs chapter 10 also from verse 19 but this one this time from the passion translation and it says if you keep talking it won't be long before you're saying something really wrong Prove you are wise from the very start. Just bite your tongue and be strong. Keep your mouth shut. Keep it quiet. It's not everything you talk. Don't say a lot of things. Things that are not spoken can never put you into trouble. It's the one that you say that will cause you trouble. So let's be wise like Solomon, okay? And keep things, some of these things private, okay? If there are other things you think that we should keep private as well, you can please kindly go ahead in the comment section and write them down there so that we can continue the conversation from there. I'll see you again next time with another episode. Until then, remember to stay very elegant. Take care, family. Mm -hmm.